I'm a licensed clinical social worker coming to you from San Diego, California. And this is Gracie, who is always on my lap. <laughs> so anyways, I want to talk to you about social anxiety. I have a ton of it. And something came up today, and I had a pretty painful insight. And um, I always get a little nervous doing these lives when I haven't really had a chance to process through anything. Hey, Julie, how are you? So um, I have a lot of social anxiety. And I've been able to set up my life in a way that I don't have to do a lot of new things that trigger me. But I have an event coming up. And I realize that my anxiety is about an 8 out of 10. And what comes up for me is, um, hey, Ernesto, how are you? So in anticipating going to this thing, I, I took two weeks to RSVP because I really wanted to try and get out of it because I just my heart starts pounding when I start thinking about it. Even talking about it now, I'm feeling pretty nervous. And um, when I think about, um, I'm glad you're doing well, Julie. So in the past, when I've gone to events and didn't know that I was a highly sensitive person, now looking back, what I can see is I get over aroused and overstimulated. So my body would have these reactions, and without knowing that I was a highly sensitive person, I just knew that I would go to these events, and my body would just feel like it was way too much. And the only thing I could do was tell myself, like, I can't deal with this. So that was one of the things. So now having the information that I get over aroused and overstimulated, I can put a different meaning on what was going on in my body. The other thing that happened is I often would try and connect with people that I think were just as anxious as I was. And because I was just almost in survival mode, that I try and connect with people and they weren't able to engage. So, hi, how are you? What are you interested in? And they would give me one and two word answers. And I was so self conscious already and didn't have the ability to step back and know that I was anxious and that people that can't engage, probably anxious too but I saw it as a reflection of my own inadequacy. So for me, it just reinforced that I was socially awkward, that I can't connect, that there's something wrong with me. And often what would happen uh, before there would be an event is I go into body image, I can't find the right thing to wear, my hair isn't right, my makeup isn't right, I feel like I've got nothing to say, I've got nothing to share. And I think that my perception is that everybody else is comfortable and loves socializing and I don't and what's wrong with me. So um, a couple of hacks that I've learned is because I'm very, HSPs are very loyal, we're very conscientious and we do really well if we have a task that um, it works to get to a party at the beginning. Um, I just learned about, you know, the analogy of the frog, if you put a frog in cold water and slowly raise the temperature of it, you can boil it to death. But if you put a frog in hot water, it'll jump out. I read something recently that said that that's not true, but it's such a great analogy. So we're going to stick to it and pretend that it's true for the sake of this, for this live. But what I find helpful is if I get to the event when it starts, when it's small, because then I don't feel so overwhelmed by all the people. It also gives me an opportunity to step in and help because if I have a task to do, I can focus on the task and the anxiety and having to connect with people is minimized. The other thing is if you told me to go to a party with 500 people that I didn't know in a, in a venue that I didn't know, but you gave me a task, find out what everybody's favorite color is, find out everybody's middle name. I can focus on that and it reduces the anxiety. So I think what happens is, well, I want to make up a story about it, but I think that when we have something else to focus on, the anxiety lessens. So what happened is, I've never really talked too much about this. I've just identified that I get anxious, but I never really looked into it. And today I was talking with a friend about this upcoming event. And she was really surprised to hear that I've got anxiety because that's not how she views me. You guys see me hop on and do lives. I you know, do videos and stuff. It's taken time for me to work up to that. I really feel much more comfortable one on one. I feel comfortable in small groups where I know people. And I have this old story in my head that I don't have anything to share. I'm not very interesting. And it's kind of interesting in this event that's coming up, like I'm getting ready to launch a podcast and I finally have a specialization and I'm really interested in working with highly sensitive people. I have a lot going on. And in the context of this event that's going up, that's all really relevant. So I'm really working on changing the narrative about it. Even as I'm talking, my stomach feels upset, my heart's pounding. 
So I'm still having a lot of the physical responses in anticipating feeling anxious. And I can't really control whether I feel anxious or not. And especially as highly sensitive people, we tend to have strong responses to things. We can't always control those. But what I can do is know that it's going on and then kind of focus on something else. If this is all I focus on, I could probably end up crying right now because of the anxiety. But I'm really working on changing the story that I have around this. And I want to create a new experience. And I think especially as highly sensitive people, but I think this is true for everybody. Hey, Tina, how are you? It's nice to see you. I think it's really easy that we've had experiences in the past where we haven't talked about it, we haven't processed it, we haven't had the language, we didn't know. I mean, I just thought I got awkward and uncomfortable in social situations and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to um, avoid them. Hey, Laura, how are you? And so then we make up a story about it because we have this experience and I think the stronger our emotions are or our responses are to things, the more we want to make up a story about it because it's uncomfortable to have physical reactions, emotional reactions and not understand why it's going on. So what I would love to encourage everybody to do if you have some social anxiety or if there are things that you're uncomfortable with, to kind of take a look back and reassess what was going on when you were in those situations. What physical sensations did you have? What thoughts do you have? We tend to have the same general thoughts about things. Like what comes up for me a lot is like, I don't have anything to say. Who would want to hear me? I'm not very interesting. And so those are kind of my go-to negative. I don't, I don't fit in. I don't belong. Everybody else has a friend. Everybody else has this connection and I don't. Those are the things that I continually, that continually come up for me when I'm in new situations or I'm not feeling as confident. The other thing that's helpful is if you have a buddy that you can go with or when you get there, if you can find somebody that you connect with to just have a little bit of um, having a buddy. I mean, I think that those are all things that help. So I would encourage you that if any of this resonates with you, to take a look at those situations and re-examine it and look at it with curiosity and see if there's a way that you can reframe it and try and do it differently. Now, I have to tell you the truth. I was a little reluctant to jump on because what if I chicken out and I don't go to this thing? The truth is I'm really good at telling on myself. So chances are I will be hopping on um, next week and either telling you that my anxiety got the worst of me and I just couldn't go. And, and what I could imagine happening is I get either really tired or I get a headache because it's too much and I just can't deal. And you know what? If that happens, it's okay. It's okay. We do what we can. We get insights. We grow. We change. You know, we try and stretch. And sometimes we can and sometimes we can't. And the best thing we can do is to be okay with that. If I end up not going and I beat myself up over it, what's that going to do? It's not going to change anything. So ideally, I will hop on next week and tell you what it was like for me to go through this experience. I think, too, that when we tend to run on the anxious side, you tend to imagine the worst, that it doesn't occur to me, like, I may see some people there that I know. I may have a really good connection. I might have a really good time. That I think the part of the brain that gets activated with fear and anxiety ends up, we, we end up imagining the worst. We don't. We don't go to a positive experience. I don't think that that's the function of anxiety. If only, wouldn't this be great? So for those of us that struggle with anxiety, if it brought up the most wonderful possible outcome, so every time we got anxious, we think, I'm going to go and I'm going to connect and I'm going to feel satisfied and I'm going to feel fulfilled. Wouldn't that be great if that was the function of anxiety? But unfortunately, that's not what it is. But again, we can use mindfulness to... Be aware of what goes on and then work with it. We can't always change the initial feelings and thoughts that come up, but once they come up, we can observe them and then we can use some hacks to make it more manageable. So I'll check in with you later. If you um, have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave comments and I will check back. If you um, are interested in working with me or you want to know more about me, I have a bunch of videos on my website, patriciayounglcsw.com. And um, I think that's it. So maybe we, can, maybe we can change how we look at anxiety and have some different experiences. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Thanks. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.